Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a secondary domain controller to your Active Directory environment. Right in front of you is my Hyper-V manager and in here I've got two servers. DC1 is the primary and only domain controller in this test environment and I've created another server which is called server2 uh, and it's just a standalone server. We're going to add this server to my domain and then promote it to a secondary domain controller running Active Directory services as well as Active Directory integrated DNS server role. So let me just quickly show you my domain controller. So I've logged into DC1. As you can see, the domain is test.local. If I go to domain controllers or you, you will see DC1 is the only domain controller in this environment. Um, and at the moment, this domain controller is running Active Directory domain services as well as Active Directory integrated DNS server role. Okay, so let me just switch to server two. Right, when you're in server two, click sysdm.cpl and click on the best match. This will open up system properties window. In here, click change to change from workgroup to domain. So I'm going to, first of all, make this server a member of the test, techtest.local domain, which is our test domain, techtest.local. Click OK. All right, so now I actually wanted you guys to see this error. So this is a very common error that you may get when you try to add a, a new uh, server to the domain. This is happening because of DNS. At the moment, this secondary server is getting its IP allocation from the virtual uh, router. Um, so it's got its own um, DNS settings. So what we need to do in this case is, um, I'm just going to click OK and cancel this. And what we need to do here is to go to the um, adapter, the network adapter, and change the DNS server to point to the existing primary domain controller, which is DC1. Now, in your production environment, you may already be getting the DNS um, server settings from your DHCP allocation, um, and you may already be pointing to the primary domain controller for your DNS queries. So if that's the case, you will not face this error. Sometimes you need to manually override the DNS settings to point to the um, existing primary domain controller. So let me just open up a control panel and go to network and internet network and sharing center. Okay, so this is the adapter on server two. Let's go to properties. Okay, so I'm going to put my one and only domain controllers IP address as the DNS server because at the moment it is running DNS server role as well. So let me just minimize this and switch to uh, DC1 server, um, and I will get the IP address. Okay, so this is the IP address of my primary domain controller. Let me minimize it and switch back to server 2. And Okay, so it seems like I didn't copy it properly. Uh, let me just try to get this here. 172.23.163. All right, there we go. And the alternate DNS server, I'm just going to put um, Google DNS as the alternate DNS server um, just for this 
testing um, environment. Um, so I'm going to click OK and OK. And I'm going to close it. OK. Let's try adding this server to the domain again. So sysdm.cpl, click on it and go change domain tech test dot local. This is my test environment, of course. So when you're doing this in your own environment, you're going to have to put your own domain. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm going to click OK. And there we go. Now it is able to resolve my uh, domain name successfully. And in here, I need to put my domain administrator um, account. So I'm just putting that now. OK. Welcome to tech test dot local domain brilliant so the first part is done we have added this server to to my active directory environment which is tech test dot local as a member server so it's a it's a member server at this stage now what we need to do is we need to restart this server and then once it comes back up on what I'm going to do is I'm going to install uh, ADDS and DNS server roles. So um, it will be identical to DC1 by the end of this video. All right, that was very quick. So server 2 has come back up online after restarting. So I am going to log into my server 2. Okay, um, actually, uh, let me just expand this. Okay, so um, I need to actually double check and make sure that I indeed logged into the server to using my domain admin credentials. I was not quite sure if that was the case. Let me just double check that. Um, okay. All right. Yep. As you can see, sign in to tech test, which is good. Brilliant. So let's. Okay. Now it's changing to sign into server two. Let me put the old way of username, which is the domain and the administrator. That way, there's no confusion. It's going to log me in using my domain admin account. Um, now I'm going to put the password. OK. Let's wait for it to log me in. I'm not quite sure what happened to the resolution, guys. Let me just try and sort it out because when I go expand the window, the the actual display doesn't really um, expand for some reason. I'll need to take a look at it later, but let's carry on with the video. Um, Okay, so let me just show it like this. Hopefully you guys can still see it properly. Um, so we've logged into the secondary server or server two in this case using my domain admin account after adding it to techtest.local domain. Um, and now I need to add roles. So in here, I'm going to add... Um, Active Directory Domain Services, click Add Features, and then I'm going to add DNS Server Role as well. Click Continue and go Next, 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 Next. Um, be careful with this setting here. Uh, if you select this, 
as it says, it will restart the server automatically. I don't usually use this option um, because I'd like to restart the server manually. So I'm going to click install to install these two server roles. Now, hopefully this should not take too long. Now, mind you that this is a test environment and my primary domain controller uh, is very light. It doesn't have a lot of um, Active Directory DNS integrated DNS zones, or it doesn't have a lot of files that it may need to replicate to the secondary domain controller. But in your production environment, um, you may have a lot of files that needs replicating once the secondary uh, or tertiary domain controller is added to the Active Directory environment. So give it some time. Um, if it needs some time to replicate everything. So um, depending on the workload and the network, um, it may take a little while for the replication to complete. So that's something to keep in mind. So we have installed... Um, the server roles now. So the next thing to do is to promote this server to a domain controller. And it's automatically selected the domain for us, techtest.local. Uh, and I'm using the domain administrator current user account to add it to the, to the domain. Now I want this server to be a global catalog as well so, and, and a DNS server. So I'm going to leave the default settings and I'm just going to add a password for uh, if, if I want, ever want to uh, run directory service restore mode. So let me just put um, a password in here. Make sure you record these passwords in IT Glue or somewhere secure. So in case you need to access them, um, you have the ability to do so. Click next. Don't worry about this error. I'm just going to go and click next. And it's going to say replicate from any domain controller. If you click the drop down, it's going to select whatever that's available for you. I've got only one domain controller, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as any domain controller. But in your production environment, if you've got multiple DCs and you want it to replicate from a, a specific domain controller for whatever reason, you can select so. But just leave this setting at any domain controller um, and you should be fine. And I'm just going to go click next. This is all good. These are just standard um, stuff. So click next, next. And it's just going to go through this prerequisite check. You need to make sure that you see this green tick. All prerequisite checks pass successfully. You might see some stuff in here. Um, but feel free to read them, but usually you don't have to worry about any of the stuff with this yellow uh, exclamation mark. Click install. And now this is obviously going to uh, promote this domain controller, uh, sorry, this server to another domain controller. So, and it's, as you can see, it's replicating um, information from my primary domain controller. I'm just going to sign us out. Actually, it's restarting, um, and next time we log back in, um, we should see our server 2 listed as a domain controller. Okay, guys, so we're back. It actually took um, a couple of minutes to apply the policies. Um, now we're here at the login screen, so I'm just going to enter the domain administrator password. And now let's go to admin tools, active directory uses and computers. And let me just expand my domain. If I go to domain controllers now, I have got two domain controllers. So thank you very much for watching my video. If you learned something new, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, take care and have a good day. Bye-bye.